Shio Nigadawu. Alright, I'm gonna greet y'all in Cherokee today just because it's a it's a Cherokee day. Um so yeah, so what languages am I going to start learning next year? Um I'm, I don't think I told y'all already. If I did I didn't mean to, but <clears throat> kinda wanted to make it a little bit of a surprise. But yeah, so we're looking here. Hausa and Igbo. Alright. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna get into the reasons really why I picked those two because I I'm pretty sure I've done that in previous videos and and I'll you know I'll probably make another video um, specifically about uh, each of those and wh and where I'll get into um, more of the reasons but for this one I'll just try to keep it as simple as possible um, so basically it's like why Nigeria um, you know it's pretty unescape unescapable um, to single out Nigeria when dealing with um, African languages or Africa anything really just because you know it has a, it's a country with the most population you know so that translates into has it has some of the biggest uh, languages of the African continent um, you know they use do it's usually a trifecta Hausa, Igbo, and Yoruba um, Hausa has around 100 million Yoruba around 50 million and Igbo also 50 million <coughs> so yeah, I, I didn't um, choose Yoruba um, it, it didn't make it, I had it on my list previously but I took it off for various reasons that I won't get into here but um, I'll just say that it's you know it's 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 related to Igbo um, not only are they both Niger Congo but they both belong to the same subgrouping called Volta Niger um, so like for example Omo is child or offspring and Yorba and it's Umu and Igbo just to give you um, just a little taste of uh, the relatedness um, and you know I, I don't know the tones yet so forgive me if I pronounce them wrong um, alright so why Nigeria then yeah apart from the obvious you know it's a huge country a lot of people um, it's also it's always kind of been that way um, it's it's basically um, like the cradle of Benue Kwa culture so Benue Kwa is a subgrouping within uh, Niger Congo happens to be the biggest subgrouping so it includes you know includes Bantu languages to the east and also includes um, Volta Niger languages Kwa languages Kru and Sanufo um, Gora languages to the west so mo it, it includes the, the you know the bulk of um, the Niger Congo family so so yeah the, it's likely that Benue Kwa originated around where the Benue and Niger rivers um, meet in this area so so yeah that's one reason and you know Igbo is geographically very close to that region um, apart from that you know it's a river delta area which I've always I always liked river deltas um, very um, interesting ecologically um, but under a lot of threat unfortunately <clears throat> so uh, so yeah so I won't get into why I picked Igbo because I think I went over that in a previous video and like I said I plan to go over it in um, in uh, videos to come uh, specifically next year but I will say like what dialects I, I chose for Igbo because Igbo is a dialect cluster so it's made up of um, mostly mutually, intel mutually intelligible um, dialects. Um, you know, some people. So basically, they 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 pretty much understand each other for the most part. You might find some extreme exceptions, you know, at opposite ends of the spectrum, where it's pretty hard for them to understand each other. But but yeah, just generally the picture. It's mostly mutually. They're mostly mutually intelligible. <clears throat> so uh, I made a um, dialect map here um, 
I'm going to get into more detail uh, later on, but I just, you know, I just um, did the basic part. <clears throat> I just got I just got the basics down here. So, like I said here, there are different ways to categorize Igbo dialects. This is only one of those ways. So, you know, there's different opinions on how you uh, would categorize them. I kind of go over them here. And, um, well, these pictures that I have, um, can't really see them that well. <clears throat> but I'm not going to get into that uh, here. But, but yeah, this is kind of I. I don't know if that's actually the Proto Igbo homeland, but it's just my first guess, just because of where it's located. <clears throat> but anyway, so yeah, there's six main dialect clusters, right? And each dialect cluster ha ha within it has, you know, various sub dialects. So let's start here. You have Northeast Igbo. Um, from a Boni state mostly, but also it spills out into other regions, other states. <coughs> so this is like centered around Abakaliki, it's probably the biggest city in this region. You have uh, Northern Igbo. Um, so this is centered around uh, Enugu state, you know, specifically like the town of Enugu and um, in Suka and uh, I think even Onicha to some extent um, so that's Northern Igbo or Savannah Igbo then you have Western Igbo um, west of the Niger River and this at least from the little little bit that I've you know gone into it it you know predictably seems to have a slot in common with Edo, you know Edo language to the west. Edo is kind of like I kind of like I kind of like to look at it as a a buffer language in between Igbo and uh, Yoruba. <coughs> then we have um, River Rhine Igbo, so this includes. Um, uh, oh yeah, by the way, the biggest, um, I think the biggest town in this region is, is Akba. Um, or I think Onicha is partly in this region too, I'm not completely sure. Yeah, so River Rhine Igbo in the south, in the Delta region. Um, you know, the biggest city is definitely Port Harcourt. Um, so this includes like Igboid subgroups, as they call them, like um, Ikwere. Ogba, Ekpeye, etc. So these are groups that they don't necessarily um, consider themselves Igbo, like on an ethnic level, but their language is, you know, in all like they're at, in all, um, you know, in essence, essentially, it's a um, Igbo dialect or dialects of Igbo. <coughs> Then you have um, southern or south central Igbo, in, um, in mostly in Imo and Abas in Abia states. Um, you know, so this encompasses like big cities like Oweri and Aba. <coughs> and then, last but not least, you have Cross River Igbo. Um, in the Cross River region, you know, so you have towns like Arochuku here. Um, you know, there's some influence here, at least culturally, from the crossover peoples like the Efik and the um, and the uh, Ibibio. Same as you know, where River Rhine Igbo has um, some influences, at least on the cultural level, from um, like Ijao peoples of the Delta um, and other groups. <clears throat> But yeah, so those are the six main um, uh, dialects or dialect clusters of Igbo. So <laughs> I would say the probably the two biggest dialects, as far as numbers of speakers, are the northern one and the southern one or south central one. Just looking at you know the big you know cities that are in there like in Suka and Nugu. Onicha, Oweri, Aba, so Umwahi is also in here. So I think 
these two are like by far the biggest and then you have what they call central Igbo it's kind of like a compromised dialect between the two between northern and southern um, at least that's my understanding of it um, so and honestly I don't really care for that dialect because for a lot of different reasons because one of the um, one of the uh, things that attracts me to Igbo in the first place is that you know it's it's very phoneme heavy it has a lot of different sounds right it has a you know richness of uh, variety of sounds so the one thing I don't like about the central dialect or the compromised dialect is that it's kind of well first it's kind of artificial you know to be honest and also you know it's it's simplified so you don't have a lot of these like extra sounds that you have in and you know the more local dialects so you know and I know that's for practical reasons it's not probably a bad move on my part just because you know most literature out there is for central Igbo or standard Igbo but you know I I, I would still be able to understand it if I picked up you know whatever dialect I pick up like the regional dialects um, it's just that I just don't really care for it personally and I think I don't know that's this is another conversation for another video but you can make an argument that you know it's it it conceivably could be um, you know play a negative role as far as um, contributing to the uh, decline of you know the regional varieties <clears throat> but anyway so uh, let me just get back to it like so what did I uh, choose overall or which dialect or dialects did I choose so I was I was debate I was all over the place honestly um, you know I was uh, I mean I always kind of knew it was gonna be this one South Central Igbo um, but I, I was I was curious to look at other dialects as well you know um, you know some some people I think they they combine these two dialects into one you know southern and cross river because they're kind of similar from what I understand then some people um, merge these two into one northern and northeast I think um, so so yeah I mean um, so yeah so I, I can't I picked this one definitely I kind of always knew that this was at least going to be one of the dialects that I was going to focus on um, so this is like you know this is one of the biggest dialects I would argue uh, along with northern um, you know it's, it's kind of a central dialect in a sense where it's you know it's not east and it's not west it's kind of in the middle um, so that's why they also call it south central so one of the reasons for picking this, I mean, there are many, but one, a few are, um, one, that the first um, material I, I got in Iqbal from FSI, Foreign Service Institute, by the way, they they have, you know, some of the best um, resources for African languages that probably by far, um, at any rate, so the FSI course was based off of this dialect specifically the one spoken um, in the Swama region, so around the Weri and Mwahia. Um or I think it's also like in Baise region. I'm not. I'm not sure. I I don't know all the um, sub categories yet. But at any rate, it was basically it was the Igbo that's standard for like Weri especially. <laughs> and apart from that, I have friends from Weri, you know. I used to live in Maryland, and um, a lot of Nigerians there, but especially Igbos. And uh, just from online, you know, I have a lot of friends from Oweri, so it just seemed natural, you know, to pick that one. And I and I like it, you know, I honestly like it. You know, it has um, aspirated consonants and uh, retroflex consonants, uh, which I think is cool. Um, you know the only downside to this dialect is that you know there's not much in the way of like it, it's very this area's 
it's heavily populated so not a lot of the natural environment is um has been preserved <clears throat> um but but yeah it's also extremely practical though because you'll find a lot of like i said it's one of the biggest dialects so you find a lot of speakers for the for this particular group so <clears throat> that's pretty much why i chose um Oweri as one of the dialects I want to focus on or you know the south central it's also spoken in Aba I think they call this the Ngwa group Ngwa um, so you know like I said there's variety within these clusters as well that you know I'll get into eventually <clears throat> but for now I'll just stick to what's taught in the uh, the book I have from FSI Alright, so for a sec, because I wanted to pick up a second dialect too, or a second group of, you know, dialect, dialect cluster. So I, I was really interested in this region, you know, because Arochuku and the history and all that is pretty fascinating. Um, the, you know, the downside about this region is not, it's not, it's one of the smaller uh, dialect clusters, so you're not going to find a lot of people compared to like the other, these other groups. Um, and geographically, you know, it's smaller. And also, like I said, some people put it aside with this one. Like, they consider it basically the same cluster. <clears throat> so I didn't pick that one. Um, Iboni, I... Generally, I, I kind of wanted to stay away from northern Igbo. No offense. But I just, you know, not... I mean, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I just... Not that interested um, in... They, they just don't appeal to me like on the phonetic level as much as the more southern dialects because I feel the southern dialects have more um, variety uh, more phonological variety um, so yeah I, I, I looked a bit into these groups here like in a bony state and um, this is northeast and you know, obviously northern Igbo I know some people in this re from this region too um uh, but I was kind of curious about this one as well, Western Igbo. Um, partially because of its proximity to like Edo, the Edo uh, territory. So it has some, you know, it has some, um, it's, it's kind of unique in that sense where I think it has some, ed, some influence from these other groups of the West that are, you know, distantly related to the Igbo anyway. <clears throat> Um, you know, it's pretty cool. Like, um, like if, just give you one example. Like in in South Central dialect, when they, if you want to say forest, you say ohia, ohia, ohia. Um, but that hia, that um, pre-aspirated like y sound, ya, it becomes uh osha in this dialect, osha, ohia. Osha, Ohia, Osha. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, downside of this group is that it's, it's you know, it's not as many speakers, um, and uh, it does have some similarities with Northern Igbo that I picked up as well. So I don't know. I kind of took it off because I decided I wasn't going to learn it just because it seems kind of similar to northern Igbo so I, um, you know I kind of you know I had I actually had it on my list you know uh, as far as one of the dialects I wanted to learn but for now at least I'm it's not on there anymore <coughs> uh, all right then you have Riverine Igbo um, so this one I, I chose to be the second uh, group of dialects to focus on for a variety of reasons um one just to uh get out of the way you know, for, it's very practical in the sense that you have port Har port harcourt here or as they call it port harcourt um so it's you know this is a major town in um uh, the, the the delta region of nigeria um you know and apart from so yeah, you find there's a lot of people you know you find from there um so it's a major center so it's it's very practical in that sense also 
you know on the other end of it you have a lot of like natural um um you have like a lot of the natural landscape that's been preserved in this region you know because of the Niger Delta like the Orashi forest and you know just a lot of forest and you know riverine um, jungles in this area that are still pretty much intact um, so uh, you know unfortunately they're getting destroyed by oil companies but Nonetheless, they're they're fighting back against that, which is topic for another video. Actually, not even another video, another channel. <laughs> but <clears throat> at any rate, so I kind of like that you had the balance. You had like a big city, Port Harcourt, but you also had like you know a lot of the natural environment still preserved in this region of all the rivers. So I thought that was cool. Um, so yeah, this is probably the southernmost Igbo um, group. Um, you know, it, it goes along the Niger River, the Orashi River, I think the Emo River is in here somewhere, a lot of rivers. Um, but yeah, so you have a lot of subgroups in this um, um, dialect cluster. Um, probably the most well-known one and probably the biggest one too is uh, Ikwere. And Ikwere are actually uh, indigenous to the region around Port Harcourt. So that's also very uh, practical. A, a very practical choice just for that reason alone um you have uh, Ekpeye here and like more in the southwestern part then you have Ogba which is like in this area then you have some groups up here which I'm kind of curious to learn about um just because of their proximity with um because they're kind of in between like these two other groups that I'm, I have interest in so I, I'm kind of interested to see um you know what the um, dialects are like in this region but I do know at least you have Ogba, you have Ekpeye and uh, Ikwere and I know these three groups and other groups in the region they don't really consider themselves Igbo I mean a lot do but they kind of have like that other another name that they're known by even though they pretty much speak um, the same language and like I said you know there's obviously some cultural influence from the the Ijao peoples of the south here um, so that's pretty cool because I've always been interested in, in that group as well um, so yeah and you know um, I mean I just from like on a phonological level I like um, these groups you know they're kind of similar to um, South Central Igbo but a little different as well so you know I, I understand that the level especially with Ekpe is is considerably different so I understand that you know the mutual intelligibility between like say Ekpeye and um, Umwahia Igbo is might be I don't know yet what the percentage would be <laughs> but you know I do know that like it's it might be a bit wide so honestly I should have only picked one dialect cluster but you know you know me like I have to pick two <laughs> but <clears throat> at any rate that's pretty much what I've chosen so far for um, for Igbo. Um, also, there's a script um, that Igbo that's coming out for Igbo, which I'll get in. I'll get. I'll go over in um, later videos next year about that. I'm also going to be learning and working on. <coughs> um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much all for Igbo. Um, you know, it's a very big language. You have, uh, I, I, I want to say there's 50 million speakers, give or take. You know, there, there's at least, there's um, there's about at least 40 million Igbo people. You know, they're everywhere. You find them everywhere, just like the Yoruba. So it's very, very useful language in general. Um, you know, it's even though it's a relatively small region, uh, it's kind of a lingua franca. Um, it kind of serves as a lingua franca, not you know, in, in the whole general Biafra region, um, which is uh, you know, it also includes you know the Delta region to the southwest, and it includes like the Cross River region to the east, 
and some would argue that Biafra also spills into southwestern Cameroon where you do have some Igbo people um, and you also have some group of Igbo people in Equatorial Guinea which is pretty cool um, so you you know assume assumingly they, uh, they, they, they would also speak Spanish uh, which would be cool to have a conversation in the Igbo and Spanish but yeah so anyway that's all for Igbo um, to the north you have Hausa right so you know why um, Hausa <laughs> I mean it's pretty self-explanatory it's the second it's the second biggest um, language of sub-Saharan Africa after Swahili you know it has around 100 million speakers give or take you know it's a trade language so it's spoken in um, a large region concentrated in uh, I think I have another map here uh, hold on oh, that's just an equal dialect chart uh, let's see where is it So as you can see, like the native where it's a native language is you know northern Nigeria and southern Niger. That's like its core region. Um, you know where it's a ma major lingua franca. You know like has a medium native presence. You have northern Ghana, northern Togo, northern Benin. Um, small part of Burkina Faso actually. Um, I, and um, you know good chunk of southern Niger. Um, goes into ch you know Chad, southwestern Chad, northern Cameroon, and the uh, you know the central belt in Nigeria. Then, where it's like a trade language, a small native presence is pretty much the rest of Nigeria, Cameroon, Togo, Benin, Ghana, Burkina Faso. It's also it's in a small part of Mali. I understand uh, Niger, rest of Niger, Chad. Uh, Cameroon, Central African Republic, it's even down here a little bit. You have some house of migrants, Gabon and Equatorial Guinea, and it's and there are some in the Sudan. Um, um, house of migrants. So it's not so needless to say it's very big. Probably only right you know, as far as geographical um, expanse, it's only rivaled probably by Swahili. <coughs> um so yeah, it's it's just very um let's see it's a very useful language altogether. Um and the history is very um interesting as well. I won't go too much into it here, but it's an Afroasiatic language. Um I don't know if I mentioned Igbo's Niger Congo or from the Benue Kwa group, further split into Greater Kwa, then further split into Volta Niger. Um, Hausa is Afroasiatic um, of the Chadic branch. So, uh, so apparently, from my understanding at least, um, the proto Chadic speakers were from Sudan somewhere and they migrated to uh, Lake Chad and they encountered uh, mostly people who spoke Nilo Saharan languages, like Kanudi, which is still spoken there, and to a lesser extent, uh, Niger Congo languages. So basically, there's a huge, there's a big influence. So basically, you know, it's Afroasiatic, but it has a big influence from the Nilo-Saharan languages, and to a lesser extent, um, Niger Congo languages, which you know I I could get into in another video into more detail. So it's very unique in that sense. The whole Chadic group, you know, Hausa just happens to be like by far the biggest language of the group <coughs> for a variety of reasons. So. So yeah, and as far as um, dialects of Hausa, I'm, I don't, I don't think there's that much variation. Um, I know in Ghana, the Hausa they speak in northern Ghana is a bit distinct, but other than that, I'm not familiar with you know major um, um, variations within Hausa. So I'm basically just learning the Kano standard, which you know virtually all like materials for the Kano standard, which is kind of like the de facto. Um, capital of, of Hausa land so um, and also it's it's not really going to be a hard language 
because of my background in Arabic and other Afroasiatic language. Um, but it's 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 distant, you know. It's about as probably as about as distant as Igbo is from Swahili or Mandingo, because those are other two Niger Congo languages that I've been learning. So, um, but I have yet to see with Igbo um, Hausa actually. I've kind of been passively learning it uh, previously, you know, a few years ago. Um, so, I, but I stopped. So it's like I'm not really. So it's 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 basically it's not going to be completely new for me. I kind of have a hang already of what the grammar is like, and it's, you know, it's pretty. It's for the most part, it's pretty standard. Um, it's it's similar to Arabic. I'll put it that way. The grammar, uh, the pronunciation is ob obviously a lot different. You know, it's it's tonal. You have your high, low, and your falling tone. Um, you know, it's um, Igbo. I, I forgot to mention has tone as well. Has high, mid, low, rising, falling tones. Um, according to some, I mean, that's another study that has to be done for Igbo, honestly, um, to get into the you know the tonology of it because it's really you know it's really I think a lot of people underestimate how many tones there are, especially you know, like on the dialect level. Like it's I've read that it's possible that some dialects might have up to eight tones, you know. Um, but I would say at least, like, it's, at least for the um, South Central dialect, there's, I would say six tones. Um, yeah, I would say at least six tones, or f maybe five to six tones. Um, but yeah, like I said, there's that's so that's something that um, has to be looked into more. Um, but yeah, so House is you know a lot less tonal than Igbo, just three. <clears throat> so um, so yeah. Uh, that's about it, I guess. Um, also, for how I'm going to be learning, um, I'm work there's an Ajami script, so it's like how it's Arabic based. Um, use that it's used for how so I'll get into more of that in another video next year as well when I start it. So, so yeah, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below. And um, thanks again for. Um, you know, for being a uh, member, you know, subscribers and for watching my videos. I, I know I can be a bit uh, long winded, so I'm trying to <laughs> work on that. Hopefully, this video wasn't, uh, didn't come out as long. Um, Alright then, then da go hanya. See you later. That's Cherokee, by the way. <laughs>